How you doing? Hello everybody, welcome back to Educate Colin Snap Channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today is the December Spotlight series, so that's featuring Jeff Blob Havoc Saloon. We're gonna be talking about which spotlights I think are really good, which combinations I think are the ones you should pick up, and it should be an informative one. And got nothing else to do. Let's begin. Bum, 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 ba, dum, bum. No Mario stuff. <laughs> So of course we have the ratings. We've gone through this before. S and A are high high priority. Those are recommended. B if you like the cards. So they're not bad, but you gotta like the cards. You gotta wanna play with them. C and below don't fully recommend unless you know you really wanna play with it, this this kind of thing. A lot of the solo new cards will be in that kind of tier. So this is a month you can skip if you want, but there are some good cards that if you don't have, you probably want to pick up during this spotlight season. So first off, we have the 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 ones without new cards. So they were tr going to try something different this month where they were going to have the blob here where they would have a new card every week. That does make the game more expensive that if that trend continues since instead of having a week off, you're going to have a week where, oh, if you want all the new cards, you're going to have to spend some keys or something like that. So and due to the Firestar situation, since it's not going to be in this season, we do have the old format where the first week is no new cards. Now, I would say this is a spotlight we've kind of had before with Jeff. And my opinion of Jeff is still the same. Jeff is probably the best card, the best series five card you can get with spotlights, except for maybe Elioth. Elioth would be the other contender, but between those two, those are in my opinion, the best options you can get right now. So Jeff being in the spotlight, regardless of whether the other two are bad, still makes getting that particular spotlight high priority so if you look here you can see any anywhere where jeff is available you don't have jeff this is a good time to get it i i would say there's really no um other rationale to pick up this spotlight besides you need jeff right this man thing and stegron are both series four cards so if you really really need them you can get them through tokens and even though man thing is playable it's not that meta press not that high of a meta presence. The Stegron has like no meta presence. There's barely any decks that people are playing with it. There is like Cerebro 5 and things like that, but it's not, even if you are playing those type of decks, you don't need Stegron. So it's just like a an option that isn't really performing high enough to make it see more play. So generally this is, do you need Jeff? If you do, then this is a fine spotlight to go for. If you don't need Jeff, then I would say absolutely skip this one for sure. Next up, we have the Blob, Tribunal, Ravona. This is where Firestar would have been, but since they changed the Blob is now the main appeal. I would say here, this this one is a little bit different than the rest, the other two spotlights we're going to be seeing here in that the supporting cast, I would say, isn't as good as the the general consensus of what a supporting cast needs to be. Living Tribunal is a card we've seen a lot. A Living Tribunal is a playable card, but is a, it's in very niche metagame decks. Pretty much only Hell Out Tribunal, and you have to be a specific type of player to really want to play that deck. So it's not very flexible. Ravona is also playable, and I do think Ravona will get better in this season. So. I could definitely see her opinion rising in stock as more people play with the new cards. But right now, Ravona isn't that, you know, isn't that meta reliant. You can definitely win games without her, but she is a card you want to be picking up if you can, though you can always just get her for tokens. So it's not like you are forced to get her here. You can just see if she becomes meta and then get her for tokens. So there's no need to jump the gun and commit on Ravona before you see data or stats or decks that really utilize her well. So um, that's the kind of issue compared to the other two spotlights we're gonna be looking at. But generally, I would say overall, if you're missing everything, it's still B, it's still worth getting, but you have to wanna be playing with all these cards, you, you know, or at least some of them if you wanna go for it. And as we go down, 
right? Ravona being a series four just makes her not that priority of um, a spotlight to get up. So even though you have Blob and Ravona, it's still C. And then Blob by himself is also C. So something interesting I I had to make a decision on is how good are the new cards by themselves, right? Those are some of the hardest uh, ratings to give because you don't know exactly how good those cards are going to be until you see them in play and see them in action. You can see all, a lot of content creators, you know, they say stuff and then A, the card comes out and it's worse or better than they expect, right? So this is more of a judgment call here, but I've decided to give all almost all the new cards here a C rating by themselves just because I think they're going to be playable, right? So I could have definitely put in D for any of them. Decided not to. I think there's actually some decks that you're going to be seeing that utilize Blob utilize Havoc, utilize Selene, all pretty effectively. So I actually think that even if you just want the new card, it's okay to do if that is what you're excited for. So that's something I just want to toss in there. Next up, we have the Havoc Nico Minora Legion. So this one here, in my opinion, relies on Nico. Nico's kind of carrying this. So Nico is also a standout, right? Not quite Jeff level, but like right up there in terms of a really flexible, really powerful, really unique card that's hard to replace and is a series five bomb. So this is definitely a spotlight you want to pick up if you don't have Nico Minora yet, right? I think M M Minoru, someone's gonna chastise me for that. So Definitely something I would look into. Havoc did get a buff, right, in yesterday's announcement video. So it's now a 2 0 instead of a 2 1. So that is something to keep in mind. It is going to lock your mana in when you play it. So if you play it on 2, you're going to have 2 mana for the rest of the game. If you play it on 3, you're going to have 3 mana for the rest of the game. So that is something that is particularly concerning. You are gaining a lot of power for that fact and if you can play it on like turn five and then it's a two eight on turn five which is not that bad so there are some payoffs to this however what's more interesting to me is how it interacts with viper and if that's going to be a really meta game plan if people are just going to be playing havoc viper on in the early game to really lock people's game plans and i wonder like if that's going to be like a new like junk level toxicity strategy that people are going to incorporate. So definitely an interesting card. I do want to see how it actually plays out in game once it comes out, but I do think it has enough potential, even as just playing it normally, just not, not early, right? So like turn five, right? You'll play something like wave havoc, right? That's, that's going to do, that's going to let you play any card you want. Plus you get a two, eight, on your game. So that actually seems viable. That actually seems like something you can do. So I actually think this card has a lot of opportunities. So I'm not really, I'm not that low on it. I think it's actually going to be in the meta. So I just wonder where it's gonna flesh out how many people are really going to utilize it in each every way. And then Legion's a good card. It's just not as core as it used to be when it was a 5-8. It's still good, so it's still high priority. It's just not, something you really need to focus on. It's also a series four card, so you can always just get it with tokens. It's not something you have to be spending spotlights on. So those are my thoughts on this particular set of cards. And then the last one for this month we have is Celine, Iron Man, and Black Knight. So this one's a little bit interesting in that we do have three series five cards, right? And that's that usually has the most potential for being the best to get of a month. You have three series fives, right? If you're missing all three, you know, great value. However, Black Knight is not that playable. Now, I don't think it's bad. It's just there's not a lot of variability in the decks you're creating with Black Knight. It requires specific strategies, and even those strategies don't have the best win rates or anything like that. So it's just not a popular card. It's just not a played card. It could definitely get better with time as they introduce more bigger cards to this card, things like that. But right now, in terms of the metagame, Black Knight's really a card you can not have and not care that you don't have. So it's really low priority. It's not really affecting this ball like too much, even though it's a series five card. Iron Lad though, however, once again, is one of those powerhouse series fives that you want to be getting right up there with 
Nico and Minoru, things like that. So if you are missing Ireland, this is a good spotlight to pick up. Saloon is also pretty good. So it's not like you're getting a bad new card or anything like that. So just like the other spotlights, it's really just focused on that supporting cast. The supporting cast is really just making these spotlights good or bad. Whether you have something like Living Tribunal, which I wouldn't rate too highly compared to Nico Minoru, Jeff, and Iron Light, which I think are very strong Series 5 cards that you want to have in your collection. So this same same thing, if you're missing Iron Light, this is a good spotlight to pick Iron Light up. If you're not missing Iron Light, then you really have to want to be playing with a new card, right? Black Knight is ignorable, in my opinion, where if you want to play with Saloon, feel free. I think it's good enough. There's a lot of ideas around Saloon that make sense. So if you want to play with that, feel free. So those are the spotlights for this month. You can kind of see it's following a trend where it's like you have a good supporting card and then either a Series 4 card or a not very played Series 5 card. That seems to be their strategy. They've been using for a long time and it seems to be working for them. So I just don't think they're going to change that in the new year or anything like that. I do wonder if they're going to start adding new cards every week instead of having that break week. This one was a little bit unique since they had to remove a card from their you know from their spotlight but overall it's the same kind of vibe if you need jeff get this spotlight if you need nothing here if you want to if you just want blob and ravona or stuff you can get this one if you need nico minora I'd, I'd stick to this one and if you need iron light i'd stick to this one if you don't need any of these like premium cards that are already out then either you want to play with the new card or you just you know, you just skip completely. And I think that's a fine idea for sh for now. So that's my thoughts on the small lights here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Educated Colin Snap. Once you watch him, you won't go back. He'll teach you tomorrow, Snap. Your skills will be.